I'm Joe Scrabbles here for Games Radar Plus, and I've just been playing Just Cause 3, and I'm joined by the games director, Roland Lestelin, here. Hello. How are you doing, Joe? Not too bad. How are you? Pretty good. More to the point. Um, <laughs> so, the inter I mean, the most interesting thing, I think, to Just Cause players is the fact that from Just Cause 2 to Just Cause 3, you've got this sort of step up in just letting them do exactly what they like. In a world of sandbox games, this seems like the biggest sandbox of them all. I mean, <laughs> is, is that the main intent? Just give everyone all the tools and see what they do with them? I mean, pretty much. You, you saw what was so much fun in JC2, and when you get presented a pr franchise like Just Cause, where all the developers are such huge fans on it as well, that you just can't mess it up, right? Like, yeah. don't break the stuff that's already good, and hopefully just make it bigger and more explosive and yeah. all that and what we started learning was while we were developing the game there are little things you do as a developer like spawning in a vehicle mm. and you're like well right now I just want to drive a sports car mm -hmm. we started thinking to ourselves why would we restrict that same fun that we're having while making the game mm. we should do the same thing and just give it to the player so we started adapting some of our systems to basically allow you to do anything you wanted because the joy of Just Cause is also making your own videos and doing your craziest action moments and having something in your head and seeing if it'll work and usually something totally bizarre happens after it. So it's like Dev Tools the game. <laughs> Dev Tools the that, game. That I like it. That's except, nice. Except cooler than that, obviously. Except cooler <laughs> yeah. and it works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and I mean, one of the most interesting things to me when we were talking in another room and, and you, a point you made was like, try and break the demo, see what happens. Like, is, is it almost about letting people push the game as far as it will go and see what happens? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I can't wait to see what people do. I remember, you know, we do play testing as well to check our controls and see how everything feels. Mm -hmm. And I'd watch some play testers play, and you know, you look through the weird one-way mirror thing and like stare at people in, like a well, fishbowl. You, you do it through a police mirror, yeah. like one-way mirror. Yeah, really? it's a little weird. Amazing. It's a little weird, but then you get to see someone actually enjoying it without being like staring at over the yeah, yeah. Your shoulder. But there's a guy who like kind of proctors it, mm -hmm. and then you'll see someone do something awesome and look over their shoulder and be like, did you just see that? And you get that smile on their face and mm. they did something we never imagined they could do. Oh man, and have you got an example of that? I don't know, we saw some people doing, uh, in fact, uh, I think Nerd Cube recently did a, a YouTube oh, okay. piece on it, and he was using one of our alpha builds for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was playing through it, and I think he did a planted explosive on a person, right. grappled the person to a chaos uh, fuel tank, reeled them in, and then blew them up. <laughs> That's just cruel. It was Surely. a little cruel. It was oh, kind of awesome too. Cruel but cool. Yeah. That seems that seems like the motto that you should be going for. Cruel, cruel but cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time and uh, we'll have more from you from Gamescom as we go. Thank you.